Hello, my name is Doug Carlson. I'm with Chapin Living Waters Foundation. And today we're going to be talking about the assembly of a super bucket kit. But first I'd like to tell you a little bit about our organization and who we are. Mr. Chapin invented drip irrigation back in the early 1960s. In the 70s, in the early 70s, he went to Africa to set up a drip irrigation system for an orphanage where they were having a terrible drought. And uh, during this time, when he came back to the United States, he thought, I can do more to help the hungry people in developing countries. So he developed a bucket kit. And we have three sizes. We have an individual or family bucket kit, which is a five-gallon pail. It's mounted three feet off the ground. The bucket is filled once in the morning and once in the afternoon and keep, can feed a family of five to seven people. Then we have the super bucket kit which is a 10 square meter kit. Uh, it's 10 33 foot rows of drip tape, a 30 gallon container, and that is mounted three feet off the ground also. And it's, um, it's gravity fed and it's filled once a day. And um, we can use it in uh, larger areas for orphanages or hospitals and we can put a number of them together we can just use one kit so basically like i said it's a 30 and then we have our quarter acre kit and that is 2000 feet of drip irrigation tape and it's set up basically the same way but you need a 55 gallon or larger container that's mounted eight feet off the ground and we will talk about that again more later the kit that we're setting up today, we're setting up on our concrete garden. Uh, it's cold outside today and um, we had some requests for how to assemble these kits. So we're going to show you how to put it together. We're going to show you the parts that are included in the parts kit. And um, we hope you learn a little something from this. Here you'll see our bucket kit instructions and the parts that come in the super bucket parts packet. Uh, the total kit weighs seven and a half pounds and it transports very easily in luggage. We uh, ship anywhere from one kit to a container load. Now we start out here with our kit and we have our super bucket kit instructions. We have the adapter for our container which contains a rubber washer, a male adapter, a female adapter, and a connector, a rubber connector with a metal screen filter. And we also, in the parts bucket packet, we have a poly hose punch. And this is for punching the hole in our sub main line, in our no hole line. And then we have our, what we call our poly S punch. And this is what we use to connect the no drip line with the, uh, with the sub main line with the no drip line. And then we have our connecting tube, it's a 15 foot length. And then what we do, we cut it down into 18 inch lengths. And here we have two five foot supply tubes that come out of the container and connect to our 33 foot sub main line. And also in the kit, we have two 165 foot rolls or 50 meters lengths of drip tape. And with our, quarter, uh, with our super bucket kit, the drip tape is rolled out into 33 foot lengths. And you can space them according to your beds. If you have raised beds, or if you don't have raised beds, you just um, uh, separate them in approximately two or three foot widths, or whatever you're growing in your garden. Okay. Here we have a sample of our drip tape. 
And every 100 feet, there are 30,000 filters. Now, I don't know if you can see the filters here very clearly or not. Uh, we use clear tape to show what the, how the uh, irrigation tape is set up. And the water goes into, into the tubing, and it filters through these 30,000 filters. And then it goes through another filtering system that comes up to this zipper. And the water flows through this zipper and that is what causes the turbulent flow and creates the equal distribution of water. So the water that is emitted at the beginning of the tape and the end of the tape is the same amount. So the quantity is exactly the same amount so you have even distribution of water throughout your garden. So every 12 inches there's a little slit and this slit a drop of water comes out slowly one drop at a time okay this is our container this is our next step um, what we do we have a 30 gallon or larger container now it can be round or rectangular whatever you can find to put your water in there's a couple ways that we can mount this we can drill a hole in the side of the container or in the bottom of the container and we're putting it in the side of this container and usually we take the male connector put the rubber gasket on the inside of the container and hand tighten it. Now you're probably wondering how to get the hole in the container. What we have, we're doing it the easy way we have an inch and a sixteenth hole saw and we just drill a hole in the container. Now you can also use a pencil and mark a hole and cut it very carefully with a, with a knife. Uh, you have to be sure that you don't overcut it because you'll have a leak here if you do. So you want to be very careful. You don't want to tighten it too tight, you want to tighten it hand tight because sometimes you can crack the, the plastic. If you, if you have a metal container, you really don't have to worry about that. The next item is the rubber plug with the screen on it. And this is, acts as a filter. We also recommend that you put some type of cloth over the top of the container um, to help filter out any debris and any water that isn't very clear. And this also helps in the filtration process. So the rubber plug just fits right into the adapter here. And once in a while you'll, the plug will get, uh, get plugged up. And all you need to do is just take, remove the plug, and just rinse it out in a little bit of water and that'll clean, clean your filter. You want to be careful that you don't uh, crush the filter and, uh, and that, that will make it, that will take, take away some of the filtering characteristics. The next thing is we want to take our two five foot supply tubes. And on our su supply tubes, one end, you can use a knife. We want to make sure that the one end is square. And the other end, we want to cut oh, approximately a 45 degree angle or maybe a little bit more on the tubing. So here we've cut the 45 degree angle in the tape or in the tubing, and this makes it much easier to install in the drip tape and we'll sh I'll show you how to do that in a little shortly. Then where's the straight punch? The next thing we want to do is take the straight punch and in a 7 8 tubing we want to punch a hole 
in the no drip tape. And when we put the hole in, we want to punch it in the crease of the tape. That's the easiest way. And then take the point of your supply tubing and just kind of twist it until it slides in. And then push it in maybe four or five inches. And then we want to do the same thing with the other supply tu tubing. And when you punch a hole in it, you want to make sure that you be very careful that you don't go through the other side of the tape. And again, just twist it until it slides in. And then we take our two ends. And our rubber plug, the two ends that are square, we just push into the rubber plug and push it into the adapter. So we're all set there. Our next step. Okay, I want to give you show you a little closer up detail of how we punch the hole in our subline tape. And first of all, we want to turn the tape sideways. You see the crease here, and you see the straight punch, and just punch it into the tubing. And then, this is our supply tubing, and you just twist it and slide it into the subline tape, maybe about four or five inches. Now when you push the punch into the tape, you only want to go as far as the first lip on the tape. You only want to push it in that far. And then that will give you a good connection a good seal in your supply line. Now I want to show you how we close the ends and tie the ends of the tape off. Again with a knife or scissors you can cut an inch and a half or two inch piece off your subline and fold it twice And on the piece that you cut off, it's helpful to kind of expand it so it's in a, in a circle. And on your tape, you want to fold it into, after you fold it twice, you want to kind of push it into a U shape. And then slide this right over the end. And that'll give you a good tight seal so you won't have a leak. And you want to do that on both ends of your tape. Now we want to do the same thing for the drip tape also. We want to cut a piece off, fold it twice, fold it into a, a U shape, and slide it on the tape. Okay, now we're going to connect using our connector. We're going to cut it into an 18 inch piece and we're cutting an angle on the tubing to connect with our subline, which is the no hole drip tape, into our drip tape and it'll look a little like this. And the punch that we use is our S punch. So again, we look at the crease in the tape, punch our hole in, and twist our line in, and maybe push it in maybe like 
all three inches would probably be good. And then our drip line, we want to punch it, the hole in the side of the tape. And the reason that we punch it in the hole in the side, if you punch it in the top, you'll ruin the tape because that's where our emitters are. So you want to punch it in the side and be very careful again that the punch doesn't go through the other side of the tape. And again, you want to twist it in and slide it in a few inches. And that's how your tape will look. Okay, our next step is to cut the connecting tubing from the submain line that goes to the drip line. And we want to cut 10 18 inch pieces. And I just guessed at 18 inches. And again, we want to cut a 45 degree or more angle to fit in our tape. And we want to use our poly, S poly punch for making the holes between our drip tape and our header tape. And again, we want to punch a hole in the side of the drip tape and then twist our jumper into the drip tape. Then we also want to punch a hole in our no hole tape. Now if the line is too short, it can come out, so we want to make sure that the line is long enough. And that's what it looks like. Now another thing, when you lay your drip tape out, when you first unroll it, it could have kinks in it and it may not lay straight. So there's a couple ways that you can do to hold the tape down. Um, you can put a rock on the drip tape or you can take some branches and cut a little Y and stick them in the ground to hold the drip tape in place. Another thing is, another way is to get a piece of wire and cut it about six or eight inches long and then just stick it in the ground to hold your drip tape in place. Okay, you've basically seen all the steps of the drip tape. Now, an important thing that when we lay the drip tape that the emitters are facing up. And the reason that we want the emitters facing up is so that if there's any sediment in the water, it'll settle at the bottom at the, of the tape. And depending upon how dirty the water is, how much sediment is in the water, will depend upon how often the drip tape needs to be cleaned out. So you may only have to clean it out during a season. You may have to flush it out weekly or maybe once a month. But in order to, do, to flush the lines out, all you do is just go to the end of your drip tape and open up the, open up the end of the drip tape and then just flush a container of water through or maybe two depending upon how how dirty the water is and the water will flush right out the end of your tape and then when you're done just put it back together again so now we have the, the drip tape all set up and we're ready to do our first test. So what we want to do is fill up our container with 30 gallons of water, go around and check our hoses for leaks, 
Now in our concrete garden, you can see the water is starting to come out the emitters every 12 inches. You can see a drip of water coming out. And it's coming out very slowly. Okay, now that you've seen how the drip works, there's one other thing that I wanted to show you. And if you have if you grow vegetables like um, carrots and they grow closer together, you're every, our emitters are spaced every 12 inches. And they'll put out maybe about a 4 or 5 inch water pattern. And you can plant in between the water spots and the, and the other plants will still get water. Now, if you have vegetables like squash and you have to plant them every 24 inches, what you can do is just take a piece of tape and place it over the emitter that you're not using. And that way you'll save on water. Now, with the drip irrigation, you can save up to 70% on water usage versus a furrow irrigation or you thank you for watching this short demonstration I wish we could have set it up outside um, next spring we're planning on setting up a quarter acre kit and we'll go over the details on how to put a quarter acre kit together all the kits assemble assemble basically the same way but there is a difference, so we want to be able to point out those differences, and um, they are pointed out in our instructions. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at chapinlivingwaters.org, or you can look us up on our website at www.chapinlivingwaters.org. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have, and we'd look forward to hearing from you. Um, on how your garden is working or gardens that you've installed. We always love to receive pictures and also hear testimony on how well your garden is working. You'll notice a major improvement on yield, on product yield, versus other types of watering. So, um, good luck, God bless you all, and thank you.